Risk management is absolutely pivotal to any trader's success, whether they are just starting out or a seasoned professional. If you trade without a risk management strategy, you will most likely lose your entire account at some point. I'm Luke from Discipline Trader, and in this video, we're going to explore the dangers of trading without a risk management strategy, discuss what key points should be included in a good risk management strategy, and finally, look at how you can make your own. Let's get started. One of the most common mistakes among new traders is to start trading a real account without giving any thought to the amount of money that they are risking beforehand. They may have had some short-term success trading on a demo account and now think they feel comfortable enough to start risking their own money. Only what they don't realise is, the emotions you encounter when your actual money is on the line are very different from those when you're just demo trading. Let's have a look at what a typical trade may look like by a trader in this situation. Meet Bill. He's relatively new to trading and has spent the last two months demo trading with virtual funds. He had great success on his demo account and now wants to replicate that success with his real money. No problem. This is going to be easy. He has a trading account of £2,000 and wants to make £200 a day from the market so he can give up his job. On his first day of live trading, he identifies a setup to go along in the market he's watching. He has decided the target for the trade should be 10 points, as this would line up with a previous high. So to reach his daily target, he works out that he needs to trade at £20 per point to make £200 on this trade. He enters the market at £20 a point long, long, and begins to anxiously watch the price movement. The price moves up 5 points and Bill is elated. He's already halfway to his daily target. Price holds at this level for a while and Bill starts to become agitated. He starts thinking, I should probably just take the profit, but then argues, it's only halfway to target though, and it's only five points. I'll stick with it. So he stays in the trade. The price then starts to drift down, back to break even, and then to 10 points below his entry. Billy's now very angry with himself. He can't believe he didn't take the profit when he had the chance. He's convinced himself he can't take a loss on this trade now. It was in profit, and he let it slip away. He decides, I'll close the trade when it's back to break even. Price, however, starts to fall further. It's now 20 points below where he entered and still falling. He's completely paralysed by what's happening. He is furious with himself for not taking the profit when he had the chance and is desperate for the price to rise again so he can close the trade at break even. Unfortunately for our trader though, price continues to fall and with it go our trader's hopes of getting out of this trade without losing money. The pain of a potential loss finally becomes too much and he closes the trade for a 40 point loss. This equates to an £800 drawdown on his £2,000 account. That's a 40% drawdown on his account in just one trade. This leaves Bill feeling broken and beaten and in a state of mind that could lead him to making further mistakes in the market in a desperate attempt to recover his losses. I'm f now jokes aside, that scenario may seem a little extreme to some of you, but in truth that's how a lot of traders blow a huge proportion of their accounts, if not the whole thing. They are completely unprepared when they need to make decisions at key points during their trades. This almost always leads to traders becoming annoyed with themselves as they look back in hindsight and question why they didn't take the profit when it was available to them. But how were they supposed to know that that was as much profit as that trade was going to make at the time? It's like they think they had a crystal ball that they just forgot to use or something. My point here is that trading is not a sure thing. It boils down to a game of probabilities. Some of your trades will make money and some will lose money. It's the role of your trading strategy to ensure that the trading opportunities you identify give you an edge in the market over the long term. However, just having a good trading strategy is not enough. As in the scenario we just looked at, the opportunity Bill identified was a good one. It matched all of the criteria set out in his trading strategy. The trade fell down as Bill didn't quantify and manage the amount of risk he was taking on the trade. In actual fact, he had absolutely no idea beforehand what amount he was risking. He calculated his position size by making the profit target equal his daily target. There was no consideration given to the amount he was risking, only what he was going to make. And that's the reason he panicked when the price started to move against him. So to combat this, all traders should have a well thought out risk management strategy to complement their trading strategy. 
Is the role of your risk management strategy to specify the amount of your account you are willing to risk in certain situations? One example of this is the amount of your account you are willing to risk on a particular trade setup. So for example, Bill may decide that he only wants to risk 2% of his account on a particular setup. His trading strategy should specify how he's going to exit that trade. Let's say in this example, the setup we are looking at has a fixed stop of 20 points. We already know he has an account of 2,000 pounds, so the position size he would enter the market at would be two pounds per point. Then, if the trade loses and Bill's stop level is hit, he loses 40 pounds, which is the 2% risk his risk management strategy specified he could risk. This minimizes the likelihood of Bill's emotions causing him to make silly decisions in the markets and ultimately losing vast amounts of his account very quickly. So what should a good risk management strategy include, you might be thinking? Well, personally for me, I think it should cover at least four key areas. Number one is the percentage you are willing to risk on each trade. Now this can be different for different setups. Two, the total percentage drawdown you can have in a single day before you stop trading. Three, the total amount of risk you can have on your account at any one time. And four, when to increase or decrease your risk parameters depending on your account growth or decline. So let's have a look at these key points a little closer. We've already looked at the reason for having this first point, but it is worth discussing how you actually decide what percentage to risk on each trade. The first part of this answer in short is backtesting. If you have a strategy you are using, you should have backtested that strategy already. Hang on, hang on. I should have backtested my strategy. Yes? But I bought it from a guy online that knows what he's doing. And? Well, it cost me a lot of money. And? Well, he assures me it's profitable. Your point is? What? You think I should have still backtested it? How the f do you know if your strategy is profitable or not if you haven't backtested it? But seriously, look back at your backtesting and use the results to work out your trade win rate. Use this to calculate how likely losing streaks will be, and from this you can work out a safe percentage of your account to risk on each trade without putting it in danger of having huge drawdowns from a losing streak. I have made a more in-depth video on how to do this, so I'll leave a link to it in the description below. The second part of this answer is how much you actually feel comfortable risking on a trade. You don't want to risk so much that you become stressed while your trades progress. Like Bill in the scenario earlier, although your backtesting results may show that it's safe to risk 5% on each trade for example, that amount may actually prevent you from keeping a calm and clear head during your trades. So reduce it to an amount that you can comfortably deal with emotionally. The second point was the total percentage drawdown you can have on your account in a single day before you stop trading for that day. This is closely related to the previous point. Although you may have set a good percentage to risk on each trade, you can still get to the point where you are trading with your emotions interfering if you have a few losing trades in succession. Let's say for example you choose to risk 3% on each trade and you have 3 losing trades in a single morning, you are now down 9% for that day. You may then find it really difficult to stay objective in the markets, and so for the protection of your account, you simply stop trading for the remainder of the day. You can come back the next day with a clear head and still have 91% of your account still intact. The third point applies more to traders that actively trade more than one market. If you are opening multiple trades at once, it can be difficult to know how much risk exposure is on your account. Therefore, if you set a maximum limit for this, it forces you to think more about your position sizes on the trade you're taking to protect your account from a big drawdown if you have a batch of losing trades across different markets for example. The limit may be something like 7%. So if you are looking to open a new trade and you know you already have 3 trades each risking 2%, you know you can only risk 1% of your account on this trade if you are going to enter. The last point was increasing or decreasing your risk parameters depending on your account growth or decline. The purpose of this point is again to help with the emotions that can destroy an account after a run of losing trades. If you have just gone through a losing streak of 10 trades and have risked 3% on each trade, your account is now down 30%. Even though you may have followed all your trading rules to the dot, self-doubt and the desperate need to make back your losses can start to creep back into your head. So in order to build your confidence back up, it can be helpful to reduce the risk parameters you've set. So you may start risking 1% on each trade and stop trading for the day after a 3% drawdown. Then when you are feeling more confident in your trading approach again, you can increase the risk parameters back to their previous levels. As I'm sure you've worked out by now, the purpose of a risk management strategy is to protect your account from big drawdowns and to help keep the trader in a healthy mental position 
so they are able to objectively assess the markets and take the correct trading opportunities. If you want to succeed in trading, you can't take a gambler's approach, otherwise your account will last 5 minutes. It's not a get-rich-quick scheme, it's a long endeavour that takes a good amount of time to master. Think of it like trading for any other qualified job. You wouldn't expect to be a qualified doctor or pilot after studying for a couple of days or months, and the same is true for trading. A good risk management strategy is there to make sure your account isn't destroyed during that endeavour, and will ultimately stand you in good stead as you become profitable over time. So that wraps up this video on risk management. I really hope you found the information to be useful. If you have enjoyed the video, please consider pressing the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more trading videos like this one. I hope you all have a good week in the markets, and I'll catch